Hi friends, Prepared Suburbanite here. I got a comment just recently, and the commenter I'll refer to is Susie. And Susie said, I need specifics. How can I get in touch with somebody in the Prepper community? I need information about realtors and locations to move to and what's needed. Just mentioning the Prepper community isn't really a big help. See a lot of things that, that indicate there's stuff to buy and things to buy, this or that, but what do you do with it? No one seems to say specifics. Help! I'm going to try to address Susie's question right after this. Okay, Susie, here's the bottom line. The prepper community is everywhere. They may not stick out. They may not uh, wear the same uniform. They may be invisible to other people. They may be absolutely visible and outstanding in their community. But preppers are preppers. Preppers are individualists. The prepper community is a big universe of like-minded individuals who foresee and understand the risks of not being prepared in case something does happen. And whatever that is that can happen, and it can be anything from a natural disaster to um, a man-made war, to uh, financial calamities, um, uh, personal, uh, the loss of a job, um, you, you name it. If it's bad and it can happen, you need to be prepared for it. And that's the like-mindedness of the prepper community. It's not a location, it's not a place to be, it's not a place to go even though we'll get into that a little bit later. When I first got involved in prepping as a lifestyle, and I guess it's, it's not really a, ha a hobby or anything like that, it really is a lifestyle. And you change the way you think about how you approach life, how you invest and what your priorities are and why you're, you're investing and why your priorities are the way they are. That's what being a prepper in my mind is really all about. I realized after being married to my lovely wife for a number of years that she was and always was a prepper. She grew up on a farm, northern Pennsylvania. They had dairy cattle. They had chickens. They uh, baled hay. They milked the cows. They harvested the eggs. They had a big garden. And they were pretty much self-sufficient. And that self-sufficiency is one of the underpinnings of being a prepper. Now, self-sufficiency goes beyond just buying things. It's really a lifestyle that says, hey, there are skills that we need to develop. Gardening skills, farming skills, mechanical skills, ability to build shelters and the kind of bushcraft skills, uh, building fires, building shelters, um, that, that kind of a thing. It becomes ingrained in folks that have lived a lifestyle of self-sufficiency. For example, on a farm in northern Pennsylvania. My wife's always been a prepper. She saves the, the greatest things. The right size boxes for storing stuff. Um, odds and ends of this and that that come in absolutely handy in a pinch 
because hey I know right where that is let me go get it here it is and that'll fit on that and that'll, that'll help whatever it is you're trying to fix and she's always thinking about that kind of stuff and it, it's been part of her makeup all her life I really never got into being the self-sufficient kind of a guy uh, getting into prepper prepperism until um, oh maybe eight years ago seven or eight years ago when um, we had the big political changes in the country and I saw the direction things were going in and realized you know we are under some some threats here and whether it's geopolitical threats whether it's terrorism whether it's natural disasters whether it's uh, uh, meteors or comets or whatever just go ask a dinosaur how he made out I don't think they were very well prepared to survive what happened to them and and I realized that the is the political winds changed that it became incumbent on me to make sure I was prepared and that was being prepared financially being prepared with food water self-defense those kinds of things to make sure that I could weather any particular storm or SHTF that may be happening so one of the very first things that my wife and I dedicated ourselves to was getting out of debt and we became debt free and it took a lot of sacrifice it took a lot of extra hard work but we were able to do it we got the credit cards paid off we got the car loans paid off we got the mortgage paid off and well in time for us to be able to begin setting aside all that money we were paying town on the debt and now that we didn't have any debt we were able to put it aside in savings and investments and things like silver which right now is a really great investment um, I don't think we're going to see prices of silver as low as it is today well below seventeen dollars an ounce um, absolutely amazing I was buying silver a few years ago at 22 and 23 25 dollars an ounce it's dropped down to below 17 now I expect that we're gonna see it back up into the 40s and 50s if we do have some kind of calamity that befalls this country back to the topic at hand when I first really got involved in, in prepping I had to do a lot of study a lot of research to find out what it is that I needed to do where do I get all this information and obviously the internet became a tool of great importance to me and I think one of the most defining individuals in the prepper movement is James Wesley Rawls now you can find his website at survivalblog.com it's currently being edited by a fellow named Hugh James Latimer who does a terrific job getting the information out there and making sure that it's understood James Wesley Rawls is the founder of the survivalblog.com he's self-described as a survivalism advocate he's a survival retreat consultant and he's an author former US military I think army captain and he's an author he wrote the Patriot series eight nine ten books about the about survival in the coming collapse I've read all of those books and there are some very very important lessons in those books experiences based on his military career and based on his um, efforts as a survivalist and advocate and survival retreat consultant 
very well written, engaging novels, well worth the read. He also formulated what he calls the American Readout Movement. Well, the American Readout is that geographic location, generally in the northwestern part of the country, that contains Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Eastern Oregon, and Eastern Washington State. That's the area of what is known as the American Readout. It's rural. It draws survivalists. It draws preppers. It draws folks that want to live off grid. It, it draws those folks that are self-sufficient. And the community there is growing by leaps and bounds of like-minded individuals that are really into being prepared, understanding survivalism, and living an off-grid lifestyle. There's a second um, readout area, and that's in eastern Tennessee. That's also very popular with preppers from a geographic location standpoint. A lot of like-minded individuals have decided that Eastern Tennessee is a really great place to be because there are like-minded individuals there. But that doesn't mean you got to sell your house in Arkansas or Florida or wherever you may be and move to Idaho or move to Montana or move to Tennessee in order to be a prepper. I live in North Carolina. I live in a very populated suburban region in Wake County, North Carolina. I've got a bug out location in northern, um, in the northern part of North Carolina. Uh, it's about 55 miles from here. Can take me an hour plus to get there by um, motor vehicle, but it's very rural very isolated, um, way off grid, believe me, <laughs> there, it's, it's way off grid. And that's the way I wanted it to be. So you can be a prepper any place. I know folks that live in city apartment buildings, 14th floor, that are preppers. Their closets are full of, of stored food. They've, they've got their bug out bags ready to go. They've got plans in effect. They've developed skills for self-sufficiency and survival. And they live in a city because that's where they live. That's where their job is. That's where their income comes from. But they all have that dream to get out of the city and get out into the rural countryside, have their bug out location, have a rural um, um, escape place, place that they can go to, or a place that they can eventually move to and live permanently. The internet's really a great place. There are just way, way too many um, prepper websites out there and all you really have to do is uh, do some uh, do some Google queries about um, living off grid prepper community uh, prepperism any of those kind of buzzwords and you'll be able to find a wealth of information online and I'm going to try to capsulize um, a many of the resources that are on the internet that I have found particularly helpful. My number one is the survivalblog.com by James Wesley Rawls. It's one of the best that's out there. And there are others. YouTube is and has been, at least up until this point, unless it changes dramatically over the next uh, few months or years, YouTube is a, another terrific resource for prepper information. There's lots of different 
venues, I think in, in the prepper community, there's the straight up preppers, folks that, that do nothing but advocate preparedness. And I'm, I'm thinking of Viking preparedness, Southern Prepper One, the Sensible Prepper, Canadian Prepper, the Prepper Nurse, the Prepared Mind Channel, Reality Survival. Those kind of channels can really give you a lot of information on the specifics and what you may need to be doing with the stuff that you're encouraged to buy on a lot of the other YouTube channels that do um, gear reviews and backpack reviews and bug out bag reviews and knife reviews and firearms reviews and all that. A lot of these other prepping channels really get into some of the detail about how to properly employ that kind of stuff. Homesteading is another subset, I think, of the prepared community. And there's a, a bunch of really, really good homesteading YouTube channels. One of my favorites is Wrangler Star. And I'll put a link uh, down in the, in the description of my favorites of these kinds of things. Um, the next would be J&J &J Acres and the American Homestead. And there's a number of other homesteading um, channels out there that, that really get into how to build that, that homestead. You're out in the country, you've got, uh, you may have animals, you may not have animals, you may be into forestry, you may be into woodworking, you may be into um, doing all kinds of stuff uh, in a homesteading kind of an environment. Not necessarily off-grid living or anything like that, but homesteading, self-sufficiency, gardening, all that. There's a hundred thousand gardening channels uh, on YouTube, and you know it depends on what you really want to get into. Um, small backyard, raised bed kind of gardening that I do found it very helpful to tap into folks like Wisconsin Garden. Um, Praxis 555722, whatever his number is, I'll put the link down below. One of the better uh, gardening channels out there. And then there's really off-grid living. I mean, these are the folks that have abandoned city living. They're not hooked up to the local power company. They've got their own wells. They grow their own food. They're into animal husbandry. They're doing everything on their own. And those are the kinds of uh, um, channels, I think, that, that really give the prepper community a real positive image. I'm talking about um, channels like Off Grid Nation, Subtech, Off Grid with Doug and Stacy, the boss of the swamp, who's one of my favorites. They're really into off grid living. They know how to survive. They have built and live in an off grid environment where they don't have to worry about the power grid going down because they don't have any access to the power grid. They use passive solar. They've got active solar. They use generators. They use wood. They do all kinds of great stuff in a very, very off-grid kind of a kind of a thing. And if you want to go that far into the prepper community, into the self-sufficiency community, it suggests that you do a lot of research into off-grid living and all the YouTube channels that surround that. Survivalism is one of the other aspects of being a prepper and being prepared. And bushcrafting is one of the real basic primitive kinds of survivalism. There's a number of really, really good bushcrafting YouTube channels that are out there. MCQ Bushcraft, 
Survival Lily, Wilderness Outfitters, that's Dave Canterbury's group, one of the best. Um, he's with the Pathfinder School, does a lot of really great things. He's the, uh, he's the guy that, that basically invented the uh, five C's of uh, survival. And if you don't know what that is, I suggest you tap into uh, Dave Canterbury's Wilderness Outfitters uh, YouTube channel, his website, the Pathfinder School, and uh, really get in to learn about it. So, Susie, I hope this at least leads you in, in the right direction as you want to tap into the prepper community, as you want to learn what, what we're what we're doing and how we do it and what we're really all about. I, I hope these kinds of thoughts and these kind of resources will be helpful for you. I found that I spend two or three hours a day, well I'm retired so I can afford to do that, but two or three hours a day just reading, whether it's in book form, whether it's on the internet, whether it's on YouTube, and reading and watching, I guess, would be about the same thing uh, as far as YouTube goes. But I'm spending two to three hours a day keeping my skills up to date, learning new things, researching new things, um, finding out about very specific aspects of uh, um, chainsaw maintenance, for example. Um, I've got an old uh, chainsaw that has um, just been the hardest thing to, to master to get the thing started. I bought a new chainsaw, a steel, learned how that worked, um, actually spent some time at the uh, steel dealer learning how that machine wants to work and how it's best to be maintained, and I applied that knowledge to this old chainsaw that I had, and I spent an hour with it yesterday, got it all cleaned up, chains all sharpened, cleaned out the carburetor, got rid of all the old gas, got things all cleaned up, primed it, choked it. Five pulls, yeah, maybe eight pulls later, I had it started, and it was running like a top. Now, that's, that's saying a lot for a guy like me that, that's got a degree in accounting, a degree in business administration, and spent 30 years of his life as a financial executive, um, the only thing I could do was afford to pay a mechanic to fix my chain size. But in the last few years, I've learned because I wanted to learn, and it, it was a lot of fun to learn how to do small engine repair, how to grow a garden, I never really grew a garden before. My wife's always had a few tomato plants here or there, depending on uh, where we were actually living. Um, but now we've got we've got a fair-sized garden that brings us um, enough tomatoes and fresh veggies, green beans and corn and radishes and lettuce and celery and all that kind of stuff. Um, it brings us enough that we we can can it up. We've got canned tomatoes. We probably put up um, 20 or 25 quarts of canned tomatoes, another dozen or dozen and a half of ready-made uh, pasta sauce. Lord knows how many pints and, of beans we've done. And we do it because we enjoy doing it. It's cheaper than buying it. It's better for you than buying it at the store. <coughs> and we have a good time together working on that kind of stuff. Growing the garden, keeping it weeded, keeping it fertilized, harvesting, canning, and enjoying the, the wonderful flavors that homegrown gardening can bring to your veggies. It's really, really wonderful. Susie, I hope this helps. I hope I address some of your questions. If not, let me know and I'll try to do a little bit more and maybe we'll do a follow-up video um, if we want to delve a little bit deeper into the prepper community. This is the Prepared Suburbanite reminding you to be prepared always 
I'm out for now, and see you on the next video.